This lesson will deal with the reciprocal of a quadratic function. And the first example we're asked to consider this function and it's the reciprocal of a quadratic function. It's 4 over x squared minus 9. Uh, we have a constant function on top. It could be 1. It could be any real number whatsoever. The quadratic function x squared minus 9 is what's in the denominator in this case. And the first example we're asked to state the domain. Now, in order to state the domain for any uh, rational function, there's often restrictions in the denominator. Not always, but very often. And if that denominator is factorable, it's going to have restrictions. So x squared minus 9 cannot equal 0. If that equaled 0, we'd be dividing 4 by 0, and we would have an undefined expression. Now, a couple ways you can solve this. We could actually add 9 to both sides and uh, have x squared cannot equal 9, and then take the square root to solve for x. In general, you won't always have the difference of two perfect squares to factor, but I'm going to factor here because that will... Uh, solve this kind of a problem in more often ways than uh, just being able to solve for x by isolating x. So we factor the difference of two squares, x squared minus 9 to x minus 3 and x plus 3. And so if x was equal to 3, that would make this factor 0. If x equals negative 3, that would make this factor 0. And so 3 and negative 3 are the two numbers that uh, satisfy this in equation. Uh, so those are the restrictions on x. Those are the numbers that I cannot put in place of x here because they would make the bottom, the denominator, 0, and so the function would be undefined. So the domain is the entire set of real numbers. x is a member of the set of real numbers. That's what that fancy capital R stands for, such that x cannot equal 3 or negative 3. x could be any other real number. Now, in order to determine the asymptotes, the asymptotes actually come from the vertical asymptotes, it is, from the restrictions on the domain. And so, and my VA is my abbreviation for vertical asymptote, and x cannot, cannot equal 3 or negative 3, that's the restriction of the domain. So the vertical asymptote is x equals 3 and negative 3. There's two vertical asymptotes. And these two graphics over here, they're screen captures from my virtual calculator. And they're, they're intended to show what happens, what's the behavior close to x equals 3 and close to x equals negative 3. So the top one here is, uh, notice I'm substituting negative 3, or something close to negative 3 in place of x. And so this number, negative 3.001, is just a little bit to the left of negative 3. And negative 2.999 is a little bit to the right of negative 3. And so notice, when I evaluate that, uh, the function value at negative 3.001 is 666.55, etc. And so notice it's a very large number. And so that implies that as, as you approach negative 3 from the left, if you get take a number really close to negative 3 but to the left of it, the function value is getting large, very large. And so that means that's in, uh, that's in indicating that as you approach negative 3 from the left side, the function value or y value is becoming extremely large. As you approach from the right side, negative 2.999 is, is close to negative 3 but to the right of it now, and notice that the y value or function value is becoming an extremely large negative. And so, this implies that, the top one implies that as you approach negative 3 from the left, and that's what that means up there, that does not mean a sign, it means from the left, the y value approaches positive infinity, becomes a very large positive number like 666.555, etc. As you approach negative 3 from the right side, because this is a little bit to the, to the right of negative 3, the y value becomes a very large negative. Now, the bottom screen capture here discusses or demonstrates what happens near x equals positive 3. And so 2.999 is a little bit to the left of positive 3. And so notice that the function value is negative 666.77, etc. And so that, that means as you approach positive 3 but from the left, the y value is becoming a very large negative. To the right of positive 3, uh, 3.001, notice that the function value is becoming a large positive. So as x approaches 3 from the right side, the y value is becoming a large positive value. Now, before I finish this page, I'm going to go to my graphing calculator here for a moment. And 
I could demonstrate these even closer. For example, the last one I just did. If I were to turn on my calculator, and so I'm going to, it's 4 divided by x squared minus 9. So if I take a number even closer, let's say 3 point, and I'll put a few more zeros before I get to the 1, x squared minus 9. And that's our function here. 4 over x squared minus 9. 4 over, and that's the x squared minus 9. And hit enter. Notice that the uh, function value is even larger. In this example down here, it was 666.555. Here it's 666,666.55, etc. So I took a number closer to 3, and then the y value or function value got even larger. Go back to our PowerPoint here. Get back to where we were a moment ago. Now, the other thing that I want to do is there's also a horizontal asymptote for this quadratic function. And the horizontal asymptote is the behavior as x becomes large. And I guess I could have left my calculator up because I'm actually going to go right back to it here. And so if the x value becomes large, this was investigating close to 3 and then this one was close to negative 3. So if we change this and maybe substitute, well, even start at 10. 4 over 10 squared minus 9. And I'll close my bracket. And so notice that the, the y value is becoming fairly small, 0 0.04. If I make that x value larger, because 10 really isn't that big, maybe we'll make it 100. Put a 0 in here. Now, this means scientific notation. So that, that number, 4.0036, etc., means times 10 to the power of negative 4. It's actually this number, point zero 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 four zero zero three six etc so it's actually quite close to zero and so notice that as x becomes big the function value approaches zero now it approaches zero from above that's a positive value and if I make this number negative if I make negative 100 now I have to insert the right brackets in the right spot here and I need negative there and then I'll put another bracket here so it's uh, negative 100 is being what's squared and then we subtract 9 and then we divide it into 4 and so notice it's still the same value and that's because x is squared doesn't matter if it's 100 in there or negative 100 uh, both squared give you the same thing so back to the PowerPoint here so those two uh, examples, as x becomes large, 4 over x squared minus 9 approaches 0 from the positive side. And the same here, if, if x tends towards a large negative value, you get the same thing, 4 over a large negative squared minus 9 still approaches 0 from above, from the right side, from the above side. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to add all these to the graph on the next page. And so, the x equals negative 3 asymptote, as you approach from the left, it goes way up. As you approach from the right, it goes way down. As you approach the x equals 3 asymptote from the left side, it goes down. As you approach from the right side, it goes up. And these both mean as you go to the far right and the far left, you're approaching 0, but from the above side as opposed to from below. So putting those all on and this is uh, what's called, since both of these are approaching 0, we say the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. That's the end behavior to the far right and far left for our function. If x becomes a very large value, the function value gets really, really close to 0.